That's right. We're right here at Sharp Facets Gallery this afternoon. Continuation of the political season. Don't forget the debate coming up tonight. Tonight is the last uh, presidential debate, so you want to watch it. You know, there were a lot of fireworks last time, and as somebody said this morning, they were looking forward to it. But uh, and I said, you're looking forward to it? And he goes, yes, after the last one. But uh, then he commented that they are sitting down, so I don't know how much fireworks we're actually going to have. But it will be interesting talking foreign policy this afternoon or this evening on the presidential. And, of course, this afternoon we have Bob Fisher, who is sole running for uh, county council, District 7. And how you doing today, Bob Fisher? Doing just fine. Thank you for having me here today. Absolutely. Now, you had a rocky road. Uh, when we talked to you uh, back in uh, May, I think everything was copacetic. But uh, then there was the election, and then things fell apart, and you were off the ballot, on the ballot. And uh, just give us a little update how all that turned out for you. Well, I went from winning the primary, being the certified District 7 Republican, to the Republican Party decertifying, or to being served papers going to the court, being decertified the day before the court case, Judge King saying that I did file properly and for the Republican Party to put me back on the ballot. Then just How'd that make you feel to be <laughs> when be decertified by the Republican and then having been put back on? How'd that make you feel? Uh, I love my local Republican Party. <laughs> I like some really nice friends, nice people. State Republican Party, not such a big fan, to be honest with you. <laughs> they abandoned you the day before the election, uh, before the trial. Then after that, the Democrats filed another suit, wanting the judge to reconsider or give them a chance to appeal the ver verdict, which I believe was to try to get it before the state Supreme Court, and that kind of died. So I was very happy that one died because I didn't want to have any more political wranglings with on the legal side. Absolutely. But, so. I, but I will be on the ballot as a petition candidate and as a Republican candidate. You can't vote both, but you can vote either one. They told me that the votes are supposed to be added together, so it doesn't make a difference which way you vote. Um, so if somebody votes straight Republican Party, that would be a vote for you yes. if they want to vote uh, across the board and decide who they're voting for specifically, they could vote you either as Republican or as petition. Uh, yes, uh, I've had a couple of Democrats say they wanted to vote for him, but they wouldn't vote for him as Republican, but they'd vote for him as a, as a petition candidate. <laughs> well, that's pretty interesting. You're going to have a win-win situation then, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> just, just keep adding them together. I don't care. I, uh, I was asked, uh, would you rather be voted for as Republican or as a petition candidate? I thought about it. I said, well, I worked a whole lot harder to get my petition, uh, my petition candidacy than I did my Republican candidacy. The, after I won the primary, I worked a whole lot harder to get that petition signed. How many uh, names did you need for your petition? Oh, I was supposed to have uh, basically 300 names. It was within a few, I can't remember, it was just right. above or below 300. And when I started counting them up, I had friends that started helping me. Right. I had over 500. <laughs> wow. That's pretty impressive, yeah. Bob. That's pretty impressive. And, you know, for some, there, there were huge numbers oh. that were that were necessary. So. Uh, and, and 300 in your district, and that has to be in your district too, doesn't it? Yes, it was out of, um, you've got to get 5%, and so that means I got about 8%. So that was a big difference. I, it went, I was worried about not getting enough, and then several good friends chipped in and started helping me get signatures, and I was, when I started putting them together, I was really surprised. Wow. But what did this whole experience teach you? I mean, there has to be a lesson out of all this. Well, I'm afraid the big lessons are here to come. Okay. As far as lessons at this point, uh, being a boy who grew up on a farm, and I mean this may be a little twist, but in a political meeting, there is more bull than there is in the whole barn lot. I have heard people make claims and statements, and like, man, this is this is really out there. So what people say and what people do seem to be a big there's a big disconnect between. Yeah. And in the political realm, it seems to say whatever somebody wants to hear. Not oh, boy, now that really is a comment, isn't it? Particularly when we talk about on federal level politics. Well, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, a lot of people fight so hard just to stay in instead of saying, and you've got to fight the distinction between what I believe and what the voters believe. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the more the voters know, 
the more they are to make the same decision you'll make knowing what you know. Sure. So it's and on a local level, there this is a good county. We've got a lot of good people here. Mm -hmm. And it's not like this local county council was evil and mean and trying to destroy the county, but there were some mistakes made that made me want to run. I had several people talk to me and tell me, Bob, you need to run, you need to run, you need to run. And I finally started looking into it and decided, yes, I did want to run. And I just want to see and if you've I never run it. for any political office before. Oh, no, never, <laughs> never. Uh, always, it was always the deal, like, I was happy to sit back and complain mm -hmm. about politics. And then I finally realized that sitting back complaining is not going to do anything. But, you know, if I... I vote, so I have the right to complain. If sure. you don't vote, then you don't have the right to complain. I agree with you 100% on that so, one. And so just complain about why not try to do something. So. Well, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, the whole issue of the in-district expense. What you see futuristically, I mean, by uh, by rights, you should be the can you, sh you are the candidate. <laughs> you should win. <laughs> Just by even by default, you'll win. So I know you've probably already started looking into some of the things that are going to be important to you and your district as, as we move forth. So when we come back, we're going to talk about some of these things. If you have a question for Bob Fisher, he is for District 7. Which What does District 7 actually cover, Bob? Uh, basically, if you're going up uh, Highway 25 North and get Deadfall Road, it's mostly everything north of Deadfall Road. Um, all the way, uh, Hodges, Ware Shoals, it goes out toward the lake, Harris Landing, the road going to Harris Landing, everything to the north of that road. Okay, so it's a pretty good sized district. But if you have a question or a comment you would like to make to Bob, just give us a call, 229-7984, that's 229-7984. When we come back, we're going to be talking, I hope you're going to be listening, don't you? And we're back here at Shark Facets Gallery, we're talking to Bob Fisher, he is uh, District 7 County Council. And, of course, uh, Bob is president of Emerald Welding out there in Hodges, correct? And uh, how's business out there in Hodges at Emerald Welding? Doing really good. Uh, our coding side, which is for mostly textiles, is doing fair. We're staying busy enough. The welding side is, and we cater to industry. That's, we'll do a walk-in, that's fine, but our main line is industry. We do whatever they want. We have, like I said, general contractor's license. We have still steel fab and equipment, so we do anything industry wants. And we've been very fortunate that it's real busy right now. Well, a lot of people, I guess, are trying to, a lot of things I think have been put off. Can only be yes. put off for so long, right? When the machines start breaking down <laughs> and safety becomes an issue, you have to do something. And we've got a really good crew of guys, and they worked hard during this hot summer, and they've been real happy to see the cool weather coming in, so. Absolutely. Things are good. But um, let's switch now. Uh, you know, you're running for county council. Uh, we have had this issue with in-district expense. And, of course, I think the latest thing is that it should go to the attorney general slash the ethics office down there in Columbia. What, uh, and I know you were one that was pushing for it to go there. Um, what, do you, what is your thoughts about this now, Bob? Well, I actually thought this was a dead issue after the, all the lawsuits were settled and people who it would affect in our county council, I thought this was just a dead issue until uh, Chuck Motes brought it up. And I really was shocked when he brought it back up because it's, I do believe the Ethics Commission is going to find this is not illegal, uh, be maybe unadvised because this is something that's been done at the state level for I don't know how many years. It was a way for the state politicians. I the think the difference is it was more public knowledge of it than well, it was here on our local level. Well, exactly. Uh, the state politicians have been short of, because, I mean, you can't be a state senator for $12,000 a year realistically. You've got, you've had that in travel. But when you double your salary at the county level and nobody knows about it, everybody got problem. upset. Sure. And when Chuck Motes brought it up, and I mean, it was his right to bring it up, he is a councilman. But it seems almost a little too late to be brought up now because it's not going to be, it was give, this money was salary. It's very simple, no matter how they want to address it, it was a salary. They were supposed to pay income taxes on it, and then... But did they? 
That is the question, isn't that one well, question? Well, I'm not the IRS. Yeah, right. I know one council member who said, yes, she did from word go. Right. And I checked hers, and hers was on her ethics report every year. I discussed it with her, and she was, yeah, every year I reported it because I knew it was income. Right. So the deal is, it, if anything, it's going to be a slap on the back of the hand. Them, you know, this is not advisable the way you did it. And the way it was slid into the budget, people didn't like it. There's no legal recourse. I don't think anybody knew about it, did they? Well, <laughs> isn't that the issue? That, well, that was it. Yeah. And, and then to bring it up now is I, I, it, I don't see the timing where it really benefited the county or anybody else at this point because there's no legal way they can get the money back from the individuals because the money's gone. And not, and not only that, they have quit doing it. So that kind of that kind of says something right there, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it, it, it does. I hate to see. I think it's just going to be kind of a kind of a gray patch on our history, and we're just going to have to live with it. Uh, it's going to make it hard for the new county council, including me. Everything's going to be. We're going to have to have ourselves more scrutinized as to what we're doing. I think it should be. I uh, believe the people have. It's their money. They have the right to know where it goes. Sure. So what do you think uh, futuristically, after the first of the year, what do you think will happen? Will there be in-district expense or not? I don't see it. Uh, the term in-district expense does not really describe what it was, so I don't know how or what they're going to try, but I don't think they'll try it again because it's right now it shows us political suicide. Right. And and so uh, and, and, and I think the other thing county council is going to have to get back is going to have to get back some trust here. They will, and that's going to be the hardest thing to do because people, you know, once you've done something like this, and I don't think the, I don't think it's as much somebody trying to steal as just somebody got a bad idea and followed bad advice and said, why not? People at the state do it. Why can't we? We're not senators. We're not driving back and forth to Columbia every day, so we can't claim the same things. So we're going to have just to work hard to see if we can build trust and keep things out in the open. And well, I think one of the other issues, though, there was no, uh, there were no receipts for what the money went for. It was a salary. Don't, <laughs> just, it don't make a difference. Receipts. It, it was. It was an income. It was uh, an the, income. The thing that okay. uh, the thing, Edith Child, she did show some of the stuff she did with her money. Right. That was actually money out of her back pocket, or her purse, going to help her people and. What difference does it make? It was her money, right? As far, but the, I just can't buy into the deal that oh well, it was for this or this. It was income you paid taxes on. It was gone. There were no receipts. It was reimbursements don't have to have taxes taken out. Exactly. But if it was not taxable, then you would have to have expenses. Correct? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. All right. Well, you know, one of the things I know that I'm sure as we move forward, that'll be that'll take care of itself. Now, what about what are the things do you think the county is going to? I know that you you've had a jump on getting into this because you are the only one from your district. So, what are, you, are some of the things that you think we're going to have to look at as the county moving forward? Well, uh, be it county government, state government, federal government, in a bad uh, economic environment, mm -hmm. the main issue is jobs. Now, what can I as a county councilman do? To create jobs, not near as much as people think. What I can do is work with the economic development, um, see what we can do, what companies we can bring in at standard procedure. You offer them a benefit package. The details of the benefit packages I'm not exactly sure of because I don't have access to those. But you've got to offer them enticements to come in. Mm -hmm. And I hope we can bring in good companies. I want uh, companies that are good corporate neighbors that are looking to make a better community, that are looking for a home. I'd like to see... Does the county have what's necessary to bring in uh, good corporate partners? We have land. We mm -hmm. have good water. Okay. Uh, we have a fairly good work environment. Right now, one of the biggest problems that I see is uh, a skilled workforce. Uh, one number that I heard, it was almost 50% of the people hired for the new companies that come into Greenwood that have an an education requirement level of associate's degree or better come from out of, out of this county. No, that's not good. No. Piedmont Tech, I think, is doing a job trying to get more and more people in. They, this their job. The more people they recruit, the better off, the more funds. So sure. it's their business. But they're also trying to develop it up to where we can have more local people fill these jobs. And we have companies coming in, they won't know what kind of workforce you have. Sure. 
and I want us to have the workforce they need. So that means we need people trained for these companies. And there's becoming more of a connection between the plants and the educational institutions as to what we need. And it's got to be good communication. You've got to, the plan has to let me know this is the kind of people I need. Do you have these people? Sure. But there are several prospects coming up for plants. I don't know all the details. I just know some of the information. And it looks good for Greenwood. And it's not something that I did. Or it's, actually, a lot of this is not even something the present council did. This has been in the works for years. Sure. So it looks good when the economy is coming back. I think more, more jobs will be coming back to Greenwood will get a very good share of the jobs coming in. Other things that you think, though, need to be um, addressed as far as our county, are there other other things that we need to address? Oh, we've got a lot of problems that need to be addressed. Um, the biggest problem is as old as politics itself. The line between how much taxes is enough and how much is too much. Sure. Because there's we have an obligation on some aspects, we have a legal obligation to fulfill. There's laws requiring us to do certain things, like the um, 4% or 6%. If you have a second home, it's at a 6% rate. Sure. And if you have your primary house, it's at 4%. And that's adjusted by the state. That's not, I've told that, it's, it's controlled at the state level. We can't control that, but we must enforce. And we, by law, must supply jail. We must supply law enforcement, EMS. So there's things that we've got to do. And then there's things that we are morally obligated. There are times that there are people less fortunate that we've got to help out. Um, how could you be a Christian and look at someone in dire need and not do something? Your heart feels compelled. But at the same time, this is the people's money. How far can you go? Sure. So there's a, a fine line to watch. And there's going to be issues like right now. One thing going on right now is between the city. The city asking. The city's been asking for favors. And the latest was the deal with the landfill fees. Yes. And it voted to go through to give them take eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars worth of estimated landfill fees, drop that down to two hundred thousand dollars. The people who live in the city are also county residents. So they are paying taxes for county. And it's an iffy thing because you did it for lander, so now you do it for here. When it started, how it started, but we've got a bunch of textile mills and old buildings left. Right. If we just make it a blank policy that we'll just supplement anything you want to tear down, we're going to get into some bad problems because the amount of landfill space we have is estimated to take us for the next like, five, six years. We you start filling up quicker, sure. you know, we're going to have to build new, we're going to have to, you know, unearth a, a new landfill. And I hate to see the citizens pick up the tab for somebody making a mistake. And the, the, green, the old mill site was a mistake. Whoever went to tear that out should have had a security bond to guarantee they'd do the job. When they pulled out and left it, that security bond should have taken for that. Yep. So I somebody agree. dropped the ball. I don't know who, I don't have the power, or it's a city issue, not a county issue. But that's one of the ones that worried me. And yes, I think we're going to have to do that, but I don't know. There's more issues at hand that will be coming up with the city, I'm sure. Absolutely. Well, you know, when, when it all comes down to money, everybody's always looking how to shave a dime or a quarter or whatever. So, yes, those are issues that we are all going to have to face. I know there's probably more issues that we can talk about, but right now we are coming up on South Carolina News. And, of course, we are here with Bob Fisher. He is District 7 out there, Hodges, all the way up to uh, Ware Shoals and out to the lake out there. So if you've got a question for him, you know, he's going to be your man. Why don't you give him a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Well, that's what we're going to be talking about right up till the 5 o'clock hour. So, uh, you know, Bob Fisher, it's good to have you here, right here, sitting across from me this afternoon so we can answer some of these questions. Thank you. It's good to be here. Absolutely. All right, coming up in less than 10 seconds, it is South Carolina News and then a word from our sponsors. If you'd like to give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be right back. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 
72 Bypass, and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. We're right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery on the 72 Bypass. Yes, I'm Ann Eller right here with you. Debate coming up tonight, and of course, uh, tomorrow morning I'll be talking all about it right on the I Love Ann Show. Hope you'll tune in for that. But uh, this afternoon we have Bob Fisher here with us. He is District 7. He's going to be the, the uh, county council from District 7, and it's good to have you here. He's a businessman. You know, I think um, it looks like the uh, complexity of county council will be changing just because we'll have uh, Steve Brown, you as a, as a businessman. Steve Brown, of course, has a big background in city government, and so uh, that's going to bring an interesting change to the council, isn't it? It will. Um... I think a lot of people are looking forward to it to see the change. Um, several council members have been there a long time and were, and were nice people and they had their own ideas of what they wanted to see happen. And apparently, the, in my case, like I say, Bob Jennings, super nice guy, I talked to him several times. But the biggest thing when then district expense came up and other issues like that, and I won the primary by a slim margin, but I did win. Sure. And with Steve Brown, he had issues, a lot of the same issues, and it just was a surprise to see what's, it's going to be a surprise to see what happens, just the politics and the personalities and see how things match up. Absolutely. So, uh, of course, now, when do you actually take office? I mean, the election is the 6th of November, but when do you actually take office? Uh, I've not heard officially, but someone said it's like the uh, first week of January. First week of January. All right, so uh, we're going to be interested to see if putting a businessman on county council is going to make a difference. So uh. <laughs> uh, It's, it's going to be interesting because, to me, it's basic numbers. You can't spend more than you have. Mm -hmm. That's that should be just a businessman. That should be every everybody at their household level should understand that. That's very straight. Is you can't spend what you don't have. And the hard thing is when you go after years of county budget being down, it's hard to tell people we don't have the money. And to say we have the money means we increase taxes. Then you got to go to the voters and say, hey, guess what? We increased your taxes. And the county has dealt with that for years, and it's and it's going to stay the same. I don't know where the fine line falls, mm -hmm. but that's the decision you make every year with the budget. Absolutely, and of course uh, the budget is, is a big issue. You know, one of the issues that has been uh, kind of batted around here lately has been a, a penny sales tax increase. I think uh, Mayor Welburn brought that one up as an increase for the uh, police, police department. Um, I understand his concern, but the problem is going to be, first off, the way it's advertised to give 70-something percent back in tax relief to the homeowners. Anytime you tell a homeowner I'm going to give you some tax relief, it sounds good at first. But what's to keep them from taking this 70 percent and, oh, we need some more officers, so we're just going to knock down 50 percent. Oh, we need something else, we're going to knock it down. And eventually the whole penny sales tax goes to whatever they want it to go to. Uh, I'm really opposed to it for several reasons. One is, if you want to take money from the whole county and use it to fight drugs, then that should be to the sheriff's office. Even though the county council doesn't control the sheriff's office and the sheriff is an elected official that does it, the correct way would be get and let the sheriff's department run the drug enforcement. Sure. I just can't see giving the county's money to the city. To the city. And that would be countywide. That would be a countywide tax. tax. Absolutely. You know, if you need 20 more officers, if that's what you truly need to buy drugs, then technically, if the county's going to pay for it, it should go into the county's budget and go to the county sheriff, I would think. Well, that's just like the library is technically in the city limits, but we, we had a penny sales tax to pay for the library. And we it's also the, have for the... For well, the it, but it is the county library, though. It's not yeah, the city. Yeah, okay, but, but it's it in the city. It benefits the city a whole lot more than it does, say, the town of 96 or the town of Ware Shoals. So it does help the city more than it helps the county. Right. I just meant it was located. It is located. The, within the city. But yes. it is a county, you're absolutely right, a county library. And then, of course, there's the issue of the lake. Now, I, if I remember correctly, I think we had, with that penny sales tax that we had just done away with back in June, we had raised actually more money than was actually needed for the lake issue. 
Yes, we did, and that happened from a couple of things. One is the county, I guess, spent more. People in the county bought more than they estimated, so as the money came up to the amount, they did the political steps to stop it. Once they stopped it, there were still some stores in Greenwood still charged it two months later, and they and you had to call the state to stop it. You couldn't right. stop it on the county level. But as that went on, and the other thing was through some engineering, what they thought was going to be moving dirt, they were able to take numbers and recalculate the earthquake zone and through some very thrifty engineers that were knew how to do the numbers, we ended up having to do less work. We're not out of woods with it. We don't know the details, all the details. I haven't heard if it's, I don't think it's finalized yet what we've got to do, but we've got to do a whole lot less than we originally thought. So therefore, so it's going to cost a whole lot less. We'll have millions of dollars left over. Well, what happens to that millions of dollars now? I'm scared. What happens to that? Two trains of thought here. One says you pay down bonded indebtedness. And from anybody, be a business standpoint or a personal homeowner standpoint, is it's always a wonderful thing to pay down your debt because then you're just better off, you're stronger financially. Now, if we're going to pay down bonds, what scares me about that is are we paying down bonds just so we can get more? That's be the wrong thing to do. If we're paying down bonds and just not going to get more to replace those, we're good. The other side of that would be people have said, well, let's save this money for the lake issues because there's maybe other issues at the lake. Put it in an account, let it draw interest, and just do not touch it unless there's an issue. I can see that because I think there are going to be issues at Lake Greenwood that need to be fixed. And the money was also raised, I mean, it was raised for the um, library, and mm -hmm. that's done. The money was also, so the only thing left that was raised for it was the lake. Absolutely. And there's an issue of raising money for one purpose and then spending on another that worries me. Yeah, well, you don't, you don't really have the right to, I was under the impression that if it was for those issues, it had to be spent on those issues. It is, and the only thing is, if it was raised through property tax, you could give it back as property tax relief because that's where it came from. When you raise it as a penny sales tax, you really can't give it back to the people who paid it because you can't track that. Yes, you can. I contributed X amount of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see that. I think that would be pretty interesting. And particularly now, uh, of course, I think we are generating more sales tax in our area just because we have more retail establishments now yes. with the new businesses that have opened. We will generate more of a sales tax. It will keep more of the dollars here in Greenwood, and that's that's a good thing. Um, as from a woman's standpoint of view, that every time you announce a new Coles or one of the new popular stores, they get excited. Uh, women love to know the new sh new styles, new fashion. Most men are more like, well, just whatever I can wear is whatever I can wear. We're not so excited about the new stores, sure. and that's understandable. Except when it comes to something hunting, boating, things like that, I can see guys getting very excited about things like that. Well, the funny thing is I don't hunt and I don't fish. <laughs> well, you're in the minority, I think. Very, very much so. <laughs> Hey, I'm here with Bob Fisher. We're talking about what's going to happen with the county, with some of the issues that will be coming up. Certainly hope you'll stay right with us. If you've got a question or a comment, don't hesitate to give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be. Oh, right back. that's right. We're right back here. It's a beautiful, beautiful Monday afternoon right here in Greenwood. And you are listening to WCRS 1450 AM. And, of course, don't forget, you can listen on the stream at WCRS1450AM.net. And if you want to listen on your cell phone, your smartphone, you can do that, too. We have apps right there on WCRS. Also made some changes to the website, so make sure you check it out. That's WCRS1450AM.net. And this afternoon we're talking to Bob Fisher. We are talking about some of the issues facing the county. And, and Bob, what, do you, what are some of the other things that you think are facing the county? We've talked a little bit about the lake issue. We've talked about that money sitting in that account, uh, waiting to be spent or not spent. And then, of course, uh, what else do you think? Uh, probably two things I can see that's going to be an issue. Is One is the city is asking, also asked about a penny sales tax for the... Um, Parks, and well, if we got two, that would be six, seven, eight percent. Hello. <laughs> well, the one thing is, and I, I, they're they're saying they would need help. And the theory, I asked the county uh, city council, I said, "Well, wait a minute. Why should people out of my district 
pay for a city park that's not even in my district. And he said, well, the people in the county can still use the city parks. And I said, mm, yes. A penny sales tax, I think, would average somewhere between two to $300 per year per household, for the average household mm -hmm. in this county. So I know my family does not get $200 worth of use of the city park. Uh, the Magnolia Park, not Magnolia, but the other one on, I'm trying to think of the other park. Anyway, my company built the wrought iron for the entrance mm -hmm. and donated it. Cambridge Park. Cambridge Park. Okay, right. We donated the wrought iron for the thing. Wow. So we're invested in that park, even though it wasn't in my district. I was asked, but we were glad to help. But the thing is, I looked back at it and I said, well, what does it cost to keep these parks up? And he said, oh, we're around $70,000 a year. Well, a penny sales tax, I think, comes out to about $10 billion a year. <laughs> I said, come on, you got to tell me. Well, it was an idea of putting parks, more parks, building parks, having a lot of parks built up, and having, well, wait a minute, we're going to build a lot of parks in the city, and the county's going to pay for it, but you're not going out into the, into the county building parks. Well, then if you start that, if you try to put a park at every subdivision in this county, that's not feasible, not justifiable, it's just not going to work. And I'm thinking, really, they're asking for a penny, but wanting a lot less. I, you know, that's got to be something because I don't think they can actually believe a penny would be even considered. Well, was there an idea of of getting a penny sales tax to build the new park down here on the 72 bypass, the old CPW golf course area? That may be. I'm, I'm sure that's some of the some of the planning. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you have parks, Greenville. Greenville has some beautiful parks, and everybody would love to have big, nice parks. But when you got a county that's five to ten times our size, their tax base can cover a lot of things ours can't. Well, I think, you know, one of the other things we got to look at is how much rural land do we have versus how much city land do we have, right? I mean, we have a lot of rural <laughs> land that we yeah. have the ability to go out and be in. In District 7, we've got Ware Shoals, which Ware Shoals has a park, but that park is actually in Lawrence County. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a Greenwood Park in Ware Shoals, and the people of Ware Shoals do a good job taking care of that. The Hodges doesn't have a park, but the people in my district, if they want to get in touch with nature, we usually step out our back door, walk down the road. <laughs> and it's hard for us to justify driving all the way to Greenwood just because you got to set the swings out after somebody swing in. Sure. So it's, it, for District 7, that's, that was a, a very hard thing for me to ever try to find any justification for. And I mean, I understand the city's issue that they want everybody to have a park and everybody to have a place. And the deal of you have to have full-time attendance at a park now because at night it turns into a place for people to meet and sell drugs mm -hmm. if you don't. So there's, there's some, some current serious concerns, but that was, that was really a you shocker know, when they asked. Don't, don't you think that that's an issue that really comes up with when we have more money and we don't know what to do with it? You know, and we well, like to do problem, all the extra good things that we have here. Well, your comment is when we have more money than we know what to do with. We don't have more money than we know what to do with. Exactly, well, yes. We're already cutting budgets back. Um, about every department is, in the county has suffered by not having funding that it used to have. Uh, even our local schools have had their, fundings cut, their funding cut. So what is more important? an education or a park. And I know you can't, there's a combination about somewhere down the line, and I'm not one for pouring money into any problem. Right. We've got to fix the problem and not just pour money at it. Absolutely. Well, any other issues that you see, Bob, uh, you know? There is one. Greenwood County, I think, should follow kind of the guidelines of the city as far as if a county council decides to go somewhere, uh, has been, they just take off and go. Mm -hmm. Come back, here, give me reimbursement for it. And they get, they get paid their reimbursement, and that's raised a lot of eyebrows because there's been some very expensive trips. Uh, very the, expensive trips? Okay. Some very, some very expensive trips went on. Now, some of this has been justified, and some of it is questionable. The association or county governments, I can't remember the exact terminology, they have a seminar and this classes to teach you what to get better for your county sure. association and they all pull together. They normally have it at Hilton Head mm -hmm. and I think they're wrong. It should be at Columbia where people can get reasonable hotel rooms or drive back and forth basically. Sure. But when you have it at Hilton Head, 
and you're buying condos for your county council to stay in. And I mean, if there were no hotel rooms, you couldn't find anything else, well, you put them somewhere. Right. But the county should not pay for me to go on vacation. If it's paying for me to go to a meeting, that's fine. But, you know, and realistically, if it's a hotel room and I take my wife, what did that hurt? But you shouldn't have to pay for me to go somewhere that's a resort area. So that needs to be changed. Well, you know, anymore they also have a lot of, uh, you know, things you can do right on the computer, telecomputing, Skype, all this kind of stuff yes. makes a big difference in how we can uh, get our learning accomplished. We look at colleges and what they're doing anymore, correct? Correct. Yes. So uh, I, I can see your point on that. So we've talked about some of the issues here that you see going forth and, of course, some of the issues in the past. What, what else would be, um, would be something that you think that people should be thinking about futuristically? I mean, are there things that are going to be coming up that we're going to have to be trying to make an informed decision? I think one of the things that I have seen through County Council, just for the record, is uh, a lack of transparency. It does seem like there's a lot, I mean, that the County Council does. and uh, It goes back, I think, the whole thing is sometimes it's easier just to do something and not try to explain it. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that if you've got a two-year-old or five-year-old child and you're starting trying to tell them, explain them what you're doing and it doesn't make any sense. You why? 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 <laughs> but the problem is the people that we represent, they're not five-year-olds. Right. And if you try to treat them that way, they're being cheated out because they're the ones paying the money. If they wouldn't pay in, if they wouldn't pay in taxes, they say, who cares? They're paying the money. So if they pay the money... We've got to go through the trouble to explain to them what we're doing. They should have the ability to say, why? 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 <laughs> exactly. And, that's, <laughs> and some of the voters do that. <laughs> why? Why? It, it, it does come up sometimes. But it is realistic. They're paying the bills, so well, we're just writing the checks. They're paying the bills. So they need to know what goes on. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to ask you one more question here. You know, uh, the uh, Civic Center has been closed down. Have you done any investigating on, on that issue? I've uh, talked to a good many people, and a lot of, one time there was talk about revitalization, oh, and I think they were talking millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, the county did it the first time, it didn't work. It went under. Now, unless they change what they plan to do, there's no need in trying it again. Now, I do believe there's justifiability to reopen the Civic Center and just fix it up, not brand new overhaul and make everything fancy and go to some outside promoters. Get somebody who does this for a living and knows how to do it and say, listen, do you think you can bring people in? Do you think you can fill the seats? If you do, fine, let you do it. I don't think the county needs to try to be involved in running a civic center because that's something the private sector could probably do better. Yes, I agree, I agree. So there, there might be hope for the civic center yet. I've had a guy that was involved in maintenance that said, the building is not as bad as a lot of people think. That we could probably get it back going again for not a terrible lot of money. But I'd like, to, I'd like to see it be done by the private sector, somebody who's out to make a profit, and let them make a profit. Oh, profit. That, Are we supposed to be able to make a profit in today's well, world? <laughs> well, the county governments are not designed to make profit. Right. So let's give it to individuals because businesses... Individuals, companies can take areas that the profit margin is almost non-existent, and they can survive. And if governments get involved in it, usually they lose the taxpayers' money. And my first thing is, don't lose the taxpayers' money. If somebody else wants to go out and invest it and lose their money, sure, pat them on the back and tell them how fun. Right. But don't come with an idea that's good, that you may lose the taxpayers' money. Absolutely. Well, you know, we've talked about a lot of issues as we get ready to close this out. Are there any other things that you think we ought to bring to the fore here this afternoon? Things to bring. No major issues uh, that we haven't covered, mm -hmm. as far as I would like to say. Uh, where I said I was running a tight campaign, I financed the whole campaign myself. I didn't, didn't take any donations from anybody. How much did, did it cost you money, though, to defend uh, yourself? Uh, for the uh, no, I didn't hire a lawyer. I did it on my own. I yeah. filed my uh, uh, where you had to file a response. Right. I sat back, read several other people's responses, and seen how they did it. And I was told that being that I didn't have a lawyer, that they would give me some leeway. Filed my own defense. 
Um, that took some time, but it was kind of proud of myself to know that I did it. So I didn't type any money in legal fees. I figured either I win or lose, and I would rather lose and save that money for campaigning right. than spend it and then lose. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so, but you financed your own campaign uh, yourself. You haven't taken any donations. No, da no donations. Uh, I still I will give the Hodges and Hodges Colesbury and the Warehouse Fire Department. Um, I pay taxes. I, I mean, why do you pay check? You can take taxes out of it, and I'm gonna hand it over to those. I'm alternate between fire departments for the first year. The fire departments have been hurt bad by funding. I talked to Sarah. I talked to one just the other day, and he was telling me that you know it's the money's not there, and they there's things they need, but and that's gonna hit true with most every agency. Or this department. is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Okay, go ahead, Bob. So you're gonna give your first year's paycheck to the two fire departments. Yes, and then after, that's admirable. Well, I'm just trying to help. But then the next thing is, I would like to thank all the people. I mean, a lot of a lot of people have campaigns that raise money. They're going to throw big parties for celebrations or victories. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the money's gone. I ain't got it. So, I, and, and the people who supported me, they knew that. They knew that it was a campaign that was based off just looking for some progressive improvement. So I don't want to say change, it doesn't sound right. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm not running on change. You're running on progressive improvement. I like that. <laughs> progressive improvement, okay. But the, some really nice people helped me, supported me. Uh, Democrats, Republicans, Independents. And I'd like to say thank you to all of them. I'd like to say thank you to my mom and dad for the way they raised me. And I'd like to say a real big thank you to, from, to my wife. How She's precious and she has dealt with this. and. She's really been, she's really really been supported. She's really been supported in this. So. Absolutely. Well, Bob Fisher, we wish you all the best, and we certainly hope once you are installed as a county council person that you'll come back and give us updates on what's happening. I will, and I expect the people to hold my feet to the fire to be sure I do. Absolutely. Thanks so much for coming out today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. We're going to join the news in progress. You have been talking to with me and Bob Fisher right here. Bob, if somebody's got a question, what's your phone number? 229-0968. Uh, That's my work number, but just call me right there. You leave a message if you don't get him. That's what we do. Hey, I'm Ann Eller. That's going to do it for us. We've been talking with Bob Fisher. Bye-bye, everybody.